My brain is a miraculous instrument. It contains the information I use to protect my money. Five thousand dollars. I'll put it up, but I won't give it up without a fight. But if you're smart enough, quick enough, and lucky enough, you can win Ben Stein's money. And now, let's get this over with so I can get to the airport. Ben Stein. Here comes the sun, here comes the sun, and I say it's all right for me to put $5,000 in my money on and, as always, give these three beetle maniacs a chance to take it all away from me. But perhaps even more important than my $5,000 is the search for a new co-host for Win Ben Stein's Money. We have decided in the High Council of State that it will be one of Jimmy Kimmel's relatives. Which one? That's the question. Now let's turn to the Minuteman, to my missile, Jimmy Kimmel, and find out which potential relative, which relative and potential co-host is here today. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, ben, this is my Uncle Frank. I know Uncle Frank, and I'm honored to have him with us. Uncle Frank was a uh, policeman in New York for 20 years. Very honored Before to they have started him. getting all the sex. Frank, tell everyone how many arrests you made in, in 20 years on the New York police force. Six. Six. <laughs> There's a reason. Now, why is that? Being He's lazy. Police, no, no, no. Being a policeman isn't only making arrests, it's preventing crime. I right. went in those days, this goes way back, I'm old, from 1955 to 75, I had two steady foot posts, and as a foot patrolman, the main thing is to prevent crime. Now, this is what really, why I'm really proud. In 20 years, a crime was never committed on my post while I was working. And if it was, he didn't notice. <laughs> That's very impressive, Frank. Very impressive. Frank, I think you're, you're going to do well here. Our first contestant, I'll show you how this works, is Stuart Bussey. He's a doctor and a lawyer. Ooh. Oh. How did that happen? Two words, Jimmy. Jewish mother. Really? Yeah. Did you have two Jewish mothers? No, uh, I, I was a doctor first, and then I took the Hippocratic Oath and extended it from heal, my, heal thyself position to protect thyself. To sue thyself. I see, I see. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You don't actually sue, correct? No, I defend my own kind against yes. Oh, doctor. you defend doctors? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, no matter how bad they've scarred people. Well, there are limits. There are limits. So that's what we do, Uncle Frank. Uh, now, now, introduce this young lady. Now our second guest is Charlotte, <laughs> is Charlotte Evans. Where are you going? And she's <laughs> Stay right here. <laughs> I gotta go. Away. Yeah, I can tell you watch the show. No. And Charlotte does what for a living? Charlotte is a news anchor in Las Vegas right. uh, for CBS. Right. Oh, that's, that's a big Vegas. job. Yeah. Very big job. What's up with the dice there, Charlotte? Oh, uh, this is a gift for Ben, so he'll think of Las Vegas with oh, warm, that's fuzzy good. feelings. Thank you. I yes. do think of Vegas with warm, fuzzy feelings already. Yes. It's because of those girls I met at the, uh, I think it's called the Athenian Gardens. or The something. Olympic Gardens? The Olympic yes. Gardens. And I, I said to them, uh, would any of you like to come back to my hotel room? Never dreaming that they would. And what and, happened? Well, they, they did want to they come back. They did. Right? <laughs> it was the housekeeping staff. It's all yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. If Ben turns out Puerto Rican, those will come in handy. And uh, who's this contestant, Ben? Third, Thank you very much. Uncle Frank, who's this contestant? And our third guest is Sam Gantos. He's a part, and, uh, and he volunteers in the emergency room. Oh. I want to say volunteering in any capacity is very admirable. Very good. These are the contestants, Ben. All right, contestants, good luck. You're going to need it. Now, everyone, please turn your attention to our game board as Jimmy and Frank tell us our first five topics. All right, and they are. When I couldn't find my seats at the Dylan concert, I asked, how many rows must a man walk down? <laughs> People who don't know right from wrong besides the loser of this round? <laughs> the overweight Chief Justice sat at the end of the bench, and it was quickly overturned. <laughs> After they downsized at the castle, a disgruntled Frankenstein cried, Fired! Bad! Uh, Farmer Bob snuck into the carriage horse's stable and buggied all night long. Anyway, in the first round, question with anyone $50 to $150 in my money. We're going to start with Charlotte. Please pick a topic, lovely Charlotte. 
The overweight Chief Justice sat at the end of the bench and it was quickly overturned. $150 question, what 300 pound former U.S. President did Warren Harding pick to become Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in 1921? Who was the fat bastard? William Howard Taft. Oh. William Howard Taft. $50 toss-up, since none of you got that right. In 1890, Taft was made Solicitor General by what U.S. President, who was the grandson of a previous U.S. President? Charlotte. Roosevelt? No. Stewart, please. Uh, McKinley. No, no, no. Sam? Cleveland? No. Did you think there are two presidents, Cleveland, or two presidents, McKinley? He's from Cleveland. He's from oh, I see. Okay. No, okay, good. It's Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin All right. Harrison. Benjamin Harrison. And we've got a sharp group here, Uncle Frank. <laughs> yeah. Our next category is... Tired of his face being rinsed and spit on, the dentist put on protective gargles. And Charlie, you get to choose again. People who don't know right from wrong besides the loser of this round. $100 query. What is the psychology term for someone with a lack of social conscience and a bent towards antisocial behavior such as murder? Sam. Psychopathic. Uh, judge? That'll do it. Thank you, Sam. $50 what word coined in 1977 refers to writing or talk using psychological jargon that is inaccurate or irrelevant? Babble. Judge? Psychobabble. Psycho Oh, he did it. Good. Very good. You did it. You did it. Very good. Before I lose any more time, let me take a break. Well, then I'll come back, see how much more money these two weird-looking guys and beautiful girl can take away from me right after this. We're back with more of Who the Hell is My New Co-Host Going to Be? on Win Ben Stein's money. Right now, Sam is in the lead with $150 of my money. Stuart and Charlotte, come on, let's show some energy here. <laughs> Frank and Jimmy, what's the new category, please? I'm already starting to think of Frank as my new co-host. Uh, yeah, I know, it really fits in naturally. <laughs> the anxious motivational speaker developed a pep talk also. Uh, All right, Sam, you had the last correct answer, so you get to pick up uh, first. Uh, the anxious motivational speaker developed a pep talk also. $150 question. <laughs> Founded in 1932, what international organization promotes the art of public speaking and effective business communications? Stewart. Uh, Toastmasters. Very nice, doctor. Very nice. Thank you, Dr. Doctor. What is the surname of the world-renowned motivational speaker nicknamed Zig? Charlotte or Sam? Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. Why'd they call him Zig? I don't understand. Well, I don't know. I used to work with Ron Ziglar. Nobody called him Zig. Nobody? They called no, him Ron? No. They called him Ron. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next category. New category, please. <laughs> the computer nerd always wore satin panties because he was into software. Less than two minutes left in the round. Come on, let's try to win some money here. Stuart, you get to pick. When I couldn't find my seats at the Dylan concert, I asked, how many rows must a man walk down? Ah, we love Bob Dylan. $100 question. What is Bob Dylan's real name? Stuart. Zimmerman. I think we want his first name, too. Uh, no, that's okay. That's fine, then. Zig. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. <laughs> $50, $50 follow-up. Bob Dylan's son, Jacob, is the lead singer for what musical group? Oh, no. Char uh, Sam. Wallflowers. The Wallflowers it is. All right. All right. Still a little time. Uncle Frank, what's the next category? They gave the huge insect the mosquito to the city. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sam, you pick. Uh, they gave the huge insect the mosquito the city. $50 question. $50. Also called a darning needle. Fossilized remains of what long bodied flying insect indicated once had a two and a half foot wingspan? Stuart. The dragonfly? Yes, the dragonfly, Doctor. Very well done, Doctor. Very well done. $50 follow up. Held horizontally when at rest, how many wings do most dragonflies have? Uh, two? No. Charlotte? Four. Four it is, Charlotte. other than candy landmine. Uh, Charlie, you pick. After they downsized at the castle, a disgruntled Frankenstein cried, fired, bad. $50 question. Who directed the 1974 comedy classic Young Frankenstein? Stewart. Mel Brooks? Yes, Mel Brooks, Stewart. I believe that's the end of this round. Stewart here first.
the Ben's money, Sam. You got $200 in Charlotte. You are going to take a real ribbon at the anchor desk with that $50, I'm afraid. Uncle Frank, have a seat. We're not leaving yet. You'll get to the airport on time. Don't worry. Frank is walking back and forth to make sure there are no crimes here. That's, That's right. all. It's, it's, it's on the job. That's right. On you the notice, job. You notice there hasn't been a, there haven't been any incidents. Well, don't be so, don't be so sure there haven't been some uh, drug using. Drug Thank you so much for playing our game. We've enjoyed very much having your lovely Thank young you. self on this show. We're going to take your $50 in honor of Dr. Stewart. We're going to inject it onto the board. Oh, my God, this looks dangerous. <laughs> survivors are going to try to milk my cash cow, and I will call into the pit and defend my money by actually becoming a contestant. Stay tuned, you might learn something. It's time to find out how smart Ben really is as we play more of, of when Ben signs money. This round begins. Stuart has three hundred fifty dollars of my money. Sam has two hundred, and I have a mere forty-four fifty remaining of my original five thousand dollars stake, which I'll once again defend by becoming a common contestant. Yeah. All right. From this point forward, Ben has no mass knowledge of any of the questions to be asked. Isn't that right, Ben? What? <laughs> you better straighten up, pal. My uncle. Oh my God. God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whoever has the highest score at the end of this round. Whether it's Stuart or Sam goes on to play against Ben one-on-one -on -one for $5,000. Let's have a look at our topics. They are, his mother knew the baby king was bound for greatness when he crowned early. <laughs> Religious twitching disorders other than St. Vincent de Palsy. <laughs> Frank, Those doing? fish are so slow, they're only found in special schools. <laughs> in the locker room, the outfielder turned to the hurler and said, I'd like my brush back, pitch. <laughs> After contemplating her bust, I had to go into my studio and master paint. <laughs> I'll try his uh, religious twitching disorders other than St. Vincent de Paul's. All right. For $300, in the Middle Ages, hemlock was used to cure Sidman's chorea, a disorder of involuntary jerking motions known then as what saint's dance? Stuart? Vitus is St. Vitus. That's very good, Stuart. There you go. New category is. I heard that the Native American cryptologist was a North Dakota Indian. And uh, Stuart, you get to choose. Those fish are so slow, they're only found in special schools. All right, Uncle Frank, read that one. For $200, Guinness says the slowest fish is the dwarf species of what equine sounding fish, which may never go faster than 0 .001 miles per hour. Stuart? Uh, the uh, seahorse. The seahorse is right, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Our new category is Uncle Frank, read that one. Merle's wife liked feeling haggard. <laughs> In the locker room, the outfielder turned to the hurler and said, I like my brush back, pitch. All right. $300. What pitcher who played his last game in 1993 had his uniform numbers retired by the Angels, Astros, and Rangers? Ben. Drysdale? No. Stewart? Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan is okay. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who was he playing with when you saw him pitch? Probably the Mets, I right? the Mets. All right. Our, our next category is... To help in greasy hairstyles, I sent a check to Jerry Curl's kids. And <laughs> Stuart? To help in uh, greasy hairstyles, I sent a check to Jerry Curl's kids. All right, for $200. Unlike dreadlocks, which are twisted, what African-American hairstyle involves a pattern of tight braids close to the scalp and separated by many parts? Sam? Cornrows. Cornrows is right, Sam. Yeah. for a while, right? No. Now, when the movie Ten came out, Bo Derek was popular. He had the beads, the cornrows, the whole no. thing. No. No? no? All right. Next category is... <laughs> no, the International Toilet Convention oh, was God. not held in Krapatoa. <laughs> so the middle left the round, Sam, you choose. After or contemplating her bust, I had to go into my studio and master paint. All right. <laughs> Uncle Frank, $300? $300. In 1961, the Metropolitan Museum of Art 
a 2.3 million for Aristotle contemplating the bust of Homer by what 17th century painter? Ben? Rembrandt. Rembrandt is right. Very good, Ben. the BB gun lawsuit when he crossed the T's and put out the I's. <laughs> ben, you choose. I'll try the DA lost the BB gun lawsuit when he crossed the T's and put out the I's. For $200 in 2001, the government began legal proceedings to force what company to recall 7.5 million of its power line BB guns? Ben? Daisy. Daisy is right, Ben. Yeah. Sue, you've been a good Thanks, player. Sir. We enjoyed having you very on good, very, very you. much. We'll take your $400. We'll just bartend it back onto the board. $400 will just wipe off the counter. And then, you want another one? Okay. Okay, there you are. Okay, now it's the point of no return. You, Dr. Stewart, very smart man, both lawyer and doctor, maybe within moments of winning my $5,000 and ruining my day. Stay tuned. What I don't know will hurt me. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. This week, one of these people will become the new co-host of Win Ben Stein's Money. Will it be my Aunt Chippy, my Uncle Frank, my daughter Katie, my cousin Sal, or my mother? Which one of my actual relatives will stake a permanent claim to this safe? Watch Win Ben Stein's Money all this week to find out. Nepotism? Yes. But I'm tired of supporting these people. Win Ben Stein's Money, tomorrow at 5, only on Comedy Central. Now we'll see if Stuart can win $5,000 of Ben Stein's money. Congratulations, doctor. Congratulations, doctor and counselor. Now we're down to just you against just me. So far, you've taken a whopping $1,150 away from me, and that is yours to keep no matter what happens. Now you have a chance, I'd say quite a good one, to walk out of here with all $5,000 of my money. Your Buddha nature, everything good and permanent, you and all the human beings. Remind you as a doctor lawyer, must be reminded that the IRS will be involved. And also tell you that uh, all you have to do to get all 5,000 is beat me in what we call the best of 10 Dutch knowledge. Jimmy, you going to explain it? Maybe Frank will explain it. Uh, no, I will. Uh, I'm going to ask you and Ben the same five, five, uh, 10 questions. If he answers more than he does, he gets $5,000. It's very, very simple. Uh, Uncle Frank, do you want to first Ben? We uh, <laughs> just do a uh, little frisky beforehand. Well, this is a shocking development, everybody. You want to go first? Uh, mine. I, know. I was Jimmy asked me to hold that for him. We'll resell it. First or second? Second. You want second? All right, Ben, you go first. Did you want the uh, drugs? Or... You join me over here. Maybe you should. Uh, you didn't search him. <laughs> oh, believe me, there will be a search, and we'll get in all the cavities with him. Step right here next to me, Uncle Frank. Are you ready, Ben? I have to take off my glasses. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's begin. According to the old English proverb, still waters do what? Run deep. Yes. What stuffed bear is missing a button in the classic children's story by Don Freeman? Oh, Teddy. No, what six-letter Italian word refers to the Mafia's code of silence? Uh, Omerta. Yes, in 2001, Daniel Barenboim broke Israel's unofficial ban on the music of what anti-Semitic composer? Wagner. Yes, what geology term for the slow movement of soil down a slope is also a verb for moving stealthily? Um, let's see, crawl. No, what 20th century British prime minister was known as the Welsh wizard? Wow, um... Uh, let's see, Lloyd George. Yes, the French title of what 1991 Billy Crystal modern western translates as Life Love Cows. I don't know. Uh, Marshall Falk and Curtis Martin are stars in what professional sport? Uh, hockey. No, what World War I female spy was known by the code name H21? Matahari. Yes, the affluent suburbs known as the Main Line are located Phil outside. Outside Philadelphia, PA. Yes, that is absolutely right, and you got six. Uh, the ones you missed were uh, Marshall Falk and Curtis Martin. City Slickers was the movie, uh, Creep was the geology term we're looking for, and Corduroy was the okay. stuffed bear book. All right, six is a tough number to beat. Uncle Frank, you want to kick, it, kick in that door since you're a cop. There you go. That's the way to do it. All right, Stuart. Uh -huh. <laughs> Step over here, Uncle Frank. 
Stuart, you got 60 seconds. Six is the number you have to beat. You ready? Um, I'm ready. Let's begin. According to the old English proverb, still waters do what? Still fast. What stuffed bear is missing a button in the classic children's story by Don Freeman? Uh, Winnie the Pooh. No, what six-letter Italian word refers to the mafia's code of silence? Pass. In 2001, Daniel Barenboim broke Israel's unofficial ban on the music of what anti-Semitic composer? Uh, Wagner. Yes, what geology term for the slow movement of soil down a slope is also a verb for moving stealthily? Uh, precess? No. What 20th century British Prime Minister was known as the Welsh Wizard? Uh, Disraeli? No. The French title of what 1991 Billy Crystal Modern Western translates as Life Love Cows? Uh, City Slickers? Yes. Marshall Falk and Curtis Martin are stars in what professional sport? Uh, professional football. Yes. What World War One female spy was known by the code name H21? Out of Harry. All right. We didn't get that was right, but you only got three. Uh, uh, you missed a lot. Come on out of the booth there. Stuart. Six to three. I don't know where to go. That was really good. That was your, thank you so much for playing our game. We really enjoyed thank having you. Really? That's what I see uh, on TV. Really? I, want, I never heard that before. <laughs> anyway, I'm Stuart. I'm very relieved you can get my $5,000. Thank you very much for playing our game. You're going to be walking out for eleven fifty of our money. Still not bad, David. Yeah. Yeah. of succulent lobster, crab, shrimp, or tenderly aged meat shipped fresh from Lobster Gram. 1-800-LIVE-LOB. Coming up, it's the off-the-cuff comedy of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Next, only on Comedy Central.